Invincible is a great show and you should totally watch it, but by no means is it perfect. For all its merits, especially in the character department, Amber is one of, if not the single worst aspect of season 1. In the first episode, all we learn about her is that she seems interested in Mark, the protagonist, and is an assertive, strong-willed individual. In well-written stories, characters like her tend to be hiding or compensating for some deeply ingrained weakness that helps ground them and make them feel more believable. Because if a character is unwavering in their nobility and lacking any trait that would hinder their success in whatever endeavors they undertake in life, they lose a fundamental part of their humanity. Flaws. If the idea of a character is to emulate or represent a human, which is true in Amber's case, then it would befit the writers of said character to endow them with flaws, physical, cognitive, or ideological imperfections, shortcomings that make it so that they have to struggle and persist to achieve their goals. After all, what's the point of a story in which the characters are already complete, with no lesson to learn or obstacle to overcome? These are the thoughts that ran through my head while watching Amber, in all her majesty, act like an insufferable cunt. Did you hear what I just said? Ugh, I know you're a superhero. You know? You, you know? In episode 6, Amber gives Mark one more chance to redeem himself after months of neglecting her for superhero business. And if we're being honest here, what kind of excuse is that? He uses this opportunity to invite Amber along with him and his best friend William to check out a college campus, in an effort to connect with her on such a level that hopefully she'll finally understand how serious he is about her. The love in the air is quickly replaced with shock and terror as a lobotomized cyborg attacks the campus and Mark must abandon his alter ego in in order to save lives. Once the dust settles, he fabricates a story about reaching out to the police, but Amber's not having any of it. You took off! You left us here with that thing! Amber, no, I, that, that's not what happened. You said you wanted to start over. You said that. You promised. Even Eve vouched for you, and then you do this? Here's a brief summary of what led us here. I don't know if I can deal with it much longer. Guys are dicks. But Mark's one of the good ones. He's super into you. You're all he talks about. Really? Hmm. Well, thanks for that. I know it's hard to love someone when they don't seem to love you back, but Mark loves you. He'd be here if he could. Can we do that again? Start over? This is what I want. You and me, here, together. Okay. Did you have a good time? Where the hell did you go? Um, I ran for help. I, I tried to get security, oh, but there wasn't you anyone. Lying piece of Wait, shit. No. Considering the grave circumstances, it's totally understandable that emotions could run awry and you would probably be justified in berating your significant other for abandoning you, for any reason. Amber, however, has been established as a resilient and capable individual, someone with agency who doesn't fold under pressure, so this outburst seems somewhat out of character for her. But I'm forgetting that this is not the first time Mark has flaked on her. Thus, taking all these factors into account, Amber is completely justified in punishing Mark for his carelessness during the attack. Except... You know? You, you know? I'm not an idiot. I figured it out weeks ago. Then why are we fighting? We're fighting because you lied to me. This is the moment Invincible took a nosedive in terms of quality, and it's not the fault of the animators or voice actors, but whoever was brain dead enough to write this character in this way. This one interaction recontextualizes every instance of Amber giving Mark a hard time, and it does not make her look good. You made me feel stupid and unimportant. It's a secret identity! And because you don't trust me! I'm trusting you now! <laughs> but Amber isn't the only one who has it out for Mark. Despite his close friends, William and Eve, also being aware of his super preoccupation, they espouse the same sentiment. You just need to study and you can pull up your grades. But you were a terrible boyfriend to Amber and you got what you deserved. Sorry, not sorry. You're the one who told me not to tell Amber I was invincible. Yeah. But I didn't tell you to string her along for five months while being an asshole about it. Why does this script develop such a hate boner for the main character? What possible reason do any of these people have for treating Mark so unfavorably? And most importantly, what was Mark actually doing instead of spending time with Amber? Shit. We're fighting because you lied to me. Don't be scared, I got this. You made me feel stupid and unimportant. You lied to me. Go, 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 go! You made me feel stupid and unimportant. 
Keep in mind, at this point in the series, Amber knows Mark is invincible. She admitted it. If she was clever enough to figure that out, then it's safe to assume that she knows that a bus didn't do this to him. She was fully aware that Mark was the one fighting the cyborg on campus and didn't care. We're fighting because you lied to me. Yeah, Amber, he lied to you in an effort to protect both his secret identity and the safety of those for whom he cares, should danger ever find its way to them. Why did you lie to him about knowing his secret, thus causing the two of you untold amounts of unnecessary stress and heartache? He lied to you because he has a responsibility to something greater than high school romance. What's your excuse? You made me feel stupid and- Lady, you are stupid and unimportant. Look at what this 17-year-old fledgling superhero has to deal with on a regular basis and explain to me why placating your desire for validation shouldn't be at the bottom of his list of priorities. Stop! Get away from those pe- Help! Anyone! I need help! Freeze. She needs a doctor! I was promised this world offered worthy opponents. As if Amber's self-righteousness wasn't bad enough, the show has nothing but goodwill for her. Despite her nagging, covetous attitude towards Mark, the rest of her screen time is spent feeding you reasons to worship her. As far as the script is concerned, Amber can do no wrong. She is simply the salt of the earth, pure and faultless. Perfect. Well, you are big and strong, aren't you? You know it. And you think that makes it okay for you to harass me? I think Amber's been pretty clear about how she feels, Todd. <laughs> are you serious, Grayson? Uh, uh, leave him alone! Oh, oh, oh. What, is you, what are you looking at? You're terrified of me, aren't you? No, <laughs> I think you're amazing. I ate way too many of them in the Philippines last summer. What were you doing there? Helping build schools. Wow, those are cool boxes. They're called balls. Um, B-A-U-L ball. <laughs> Mark volunteered to help me at the Beckwell Community Center downtown. We do dinners twice a week for anyone who's hungry. The veggies are nice and soft tonight, bros. I made sure of it. Aw, thanks, Amber. Kurt, you wanna find me in the kitchen later? I've got that book we were talking about. I can barely remember my English class, and you know everyone here by name. We'll reach our true potential. Dramatic much? I'm sorry? I'm not. You're being a jerk. I kinda like it here. It's okay. A bit too fancy, maybe. But I hear they do have a good social justice program. You know how many men is my- you said your dad was killed when a gas line blew up across the street. Not that hard to figure it out from there. Detective Amber, ready to help out on any tough cases that come up. Amber does not have a character arc. She has a character loop. When we met her, she was confident, intelligent, and philanthropic. By the end of season one, she hasn't changed. She hasn't learned any lesson or struggled to achieve anything. She spent months sitting, passively, watching Mark do his best to balance his love for her with his responsibility to the world. For weeks, she kept her mouth shut about knowing his secret and then had the audacity to chastise him for lying, as though their relationship problems were entirely his fault. How much damage did she do to this poor boy's self-esteem by leading him to believe that he was in the wrong the whole time? In what world does a character gaslight their partner, repeatedly tell them they're insufficient, and withhold information that could alleviate their relationship issues and not be branded a villain? Mark is an alright guy, not particularly sharp or socially aware, but he's got a heart of gold and does not give up hope in the face of dire threats, to himself and people around him. But when he's with Amber, his IQ plummets and his backbone evaporates. She has the effect of turning him into a hapless idiot for the sake of bolstering her own ego. After watching Mark get brutally assaulted by someone who she deduced to be his father, her first order of business is to give him another chance. What makes Amber think Mark will even tolerate her cantankerous, repugnant, up her own ass ass anymore? You made me feel stupid and unimportant. It's a secret identity. And because you don't trust me. I'm trusting you now. I mean, it's cute you think that's enough. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. He rolls over like a beaten dog, accepting her return without hesitation, because the troglodytes behind the script thought that by this point, Mark actually still had a reason to feel guilty about not giving Amber enough attention. Make the world you want to live in, right? That sure is good advice, Amber. Advice that you seem to live by and act out on a daily basis. So what the ever-loving fuck do you think Mark was doing instead of entertaining you? Wow, man. I'm still working on my one-liners, but that one is really bad. I'll go. Sweetie. I said no. You're still injured. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Boathouse, hit 
Change my life, Rick. Make the world you want to live in. Is, uh, is she okay? Her name's Maya. She's not strong enough for us to transfer her to a normal hospital. But she'll be okay. Oh, well, it's too soon to tell, but I hope so. Make the world you want to live in. <laughs> Flyboy, or take the stairs. I really don't give a shit. I'd like to be alone.